If I could save time in a bottle The first thing that I'd like to do Is to save every day Till eternity passes away Just to spend them with you Hello everybody Hello Hello, hello. We're hello. here, hello, hello, we're here with Professor Yajik again, and this time we're going to talk about time. There's no time like today to talk about time, and we have lots of questions. Well, I think we should start with the basics. Um, we all read a paper of yours, Ark, uh, What is Time in Quantum Mechanics? And I think that uh, all of us, not being professional mathematicians and physicists, probably have to start a bit uh, simpler that before we get into those topics. So maybe we can start closer to the beginning and get an understanding of what time is for a physicist. Maybe to get into that, could you tell us if there is any difference between how time is understood and used in what we might call a classical physical framework as opposed to in quantum mechanics? Now, I think before, uh, before quantum mechanics, uh, there was not so much confusion mm -hmm. as uh, it became after quantum mechanics. Before quantum mechanics, everybody knew that there are different uh, concepts of time, okay? I don't have time, okay? Uh, what time we meet, uh, that's uh, okay. Uh, how long ago, uh, and uh, it's time to do something, and uh, mm, and there is this psychological time that everybody tells. Sometimes times go slow, sometimes times go fast, uh, sometimes time stops. You see, I mean that's psychological time, and uh, it was clear. Uh, yes. Uh, but we have also these uh, chronometers, uh, ordinary watches, chronometers, and so on. And we have uh, cosmic phenomena, years and weeks, and, uh, and we have moon cycles. Uh, okay, so it was all clear, and no one was... Uh, I mean, there was a problem even before quantum mechanics, what, why it seems that time goes in one direction. I, we move into the future, okay, uh, um, but we, we, we seem to have free will to change the future. If we do something now, future will be different. But even if we take a lot of effort, we seem, it seems that we can't change our past so easily, right? Uh, so that was one problem with understanding. It's called irreversibility. And uh, 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 even before quantum mechanics, people were thinking how it is that on one hand, we have uh, fundamental laws of physics, like uh, we have mechanics, electrodynamics, uh, uh, we had uh, Newtonian gravity. Uh, and there, in just fundamental equations, there was uh, no way to see this irreversibility. I mean, uh, if uh, two billiard, billiard balls hit one into another and they scatter, they can go this way or this can go backward. I mean, and, and, and it's the same phenomenon, right? Uh, so there was no irreversibility in, uh, in uh, fundamental laws of physics, but there was clearly irreversibility that if uh, a bottle breaks, okay, uh, water splashes everywhere and we see it, but we don't see all these drops coming back and water, uh, the bottle being reassembled, right? There are these macroscopic phenomena that seems to go in, uh, in just one way. 
So that was uh, that was uh, before quantum mechanics. But then ca came quantum quantum mechanics, where we were told that uh, that we should abandon uh, just ordinary numbers. Uh, that ordinary numbers come only as a result of measurements. And there is something uh, much, much more mathematically complicated, like there are wave functions, probability clouds, and there are some operators. And uh, space variables like x, y, z, z will became uh, replaced by matrices. Uh, big matrices uh, which had uh, what was called eigenvalues. So these usual numbers were just special properties of uh, operators and uh, vectors. Very strange. It was completely abstract. But then came the realization that there are these operators associated to, to space but there were no operators associated to time. Time in quantum mechanics became what it was behave bef before quantum mechanics. It's just parameter time, okay? Uh, today, tomorrow, yeah, what happened yesterday, what will happen tomorrow and so on. It, it got not quantized, so to say. It remained exactly the same. So people started, uh, uh, that was fine. Uh, as before there came Einstein with his relativity theory where time was united with space into something that Einstein called space-time. Right? Space and time, it's just one thing and we, we should not uh, uh, think of them separately because uh, when someone is moving, not only his matters get shorter, his clocks starts to run differently, okay? That was Einstein. So there was this uh, special relativity that was kind of new and everybody, oh, now we have space time, what a great revolution, of course. Uh, even if everybody knew that time is completely different than space, uh, the, the, the enthusiasm for, for this pure, you know, all new, it's new to consider them uh, one, uh, it's, uh, it's terrible, be, it's too old fashioned to consider them separately and so on. But in quantum mechanics, uh, it didn't work. Uh, everything was working fine as long as time was treated in the old way, as just a uh, a, a parameter of equation as a parameter of evolution. Things were developing in time, but if when the people try to 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 make quantum mechanics uh, in an Einstein way, uh, make uh, time on the same level as space, uh, there were mathematical problems, mathematical troubles. And until now, uh, the uh, physicists agree that there is not yet an agreement between relativity, and there are two relativities, uh, special relativity, where uh, there is no yet gravity, but then there is also general relativity when gravity comes into into play and gravity also has influence on the on the flow of time like in a, in a in a gravitational field time seems to run slower and it's not just subjective things it can be measured with with putting a clock and, and comparing it uh, with a different clock okay so normally, before uh, this Einstein general theory of relativity, it was uh, assumed that uh, space-time traveler will uh, uh, 
uh, will experience uh, uh, time going in uh, differently. But with Einstein, uh, general theory of relativity, uh, people realize that it's not only speed of the traveler, but also what kind of gravitational field he is in can influence time. But now back to quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, uh, uh, some people, you see, it uh, with quantum mechanics came completely new mathematics. I mean, the the mathematics of uh, of infinite matrices, of non-commuting non operators, we say, okay, the, um, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, space and, uh, and, and momenta, they are not, not commensurable. So it's uh, the mathematics of infinite dimensional spaces, spaces of this probability cloud. And this new mathematics was, uh, First of all, it was beautiful. Second, it was uh, developing very fast, starting with, uh, with the work of John von, Neum John von Neumann. John von Neumann, who was also uh, a genius, a mathematician, originally from Hungary, and who participated in the early development of computers. He uh, used this computer to, to in uh, first construction of the atomic bomb. So he was the chief mathematician of the a uh, American A-bomb project, but he was also a main developer of the mathematics algebra. We now have what are called von Neumann algebras, for instance, of the mathematics behind quantum mechanics. Uh, he was also a champion of, uh, of uh, what we may say today, artificial intelligence. Uh, unfortunately, he died rather early. Um, but he had, okay, so he created this new mathematics. Uh, with operators, operator algebras, operators. This is what we, what we call it. And so in quantum mechanics, physicists and mathematicians realized we had operators for space, but we do not have operators for time. Out. Time in quantum mechanics was, was be, as before, just a, a parameter, okay? It was not quantized. Uh, but then of course, physicists came in and said, well, there are no operators, but we work hard, invent something, and we invent operator for time, even without thinking what kind of time and what this operator is supposed to represent, what good will be of that, it was just formal, okay? There is operator for space, we invent operator for time. Maybe we also invent operator for, I don't know what, uh, for uh, for a color, for consciousness, for everything, operator. This is uh, what we invent now. You see, so mostly it was uh, it was done because uh, uh, because people were so much impressed with uh, with uh, with this new mathematical framework. It's like you know when uh, uh, in 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 painting, right, in art. Uh, okay, someone invented, for instance, uh, abstractionism. Okay, new direction. Uh, before it was realist, uh, maybe it was impressionist or something. Now uh, we do we we do ab abstractionism or surrealism. So okay, uh, let me let me paint Mona Lisa now in an abstractionist way. Yeah, let me let me paint something, you know, using this new new idea or surrealistic or something. Like that. It's just formal, right? There is no really need, but there is new way. So we try to do everything in a new way. Okay, so that was my uh, short answer for your short for your short question. Yes. So. <clears throat> Just to follow up on that, so it sounds like time in this, in, in all of these, well, it sounds like 
physicists use time, but don't really have an understanding of what exactly it might be because um, like the value for time is pretty arbitrary, right? You can use any, any value by comparing objects in the physical world. So, you know, like, so the rotation of, of planets or the vibrations of a certain um, atom or something like that. And so when you say that time hasn't actually been quantized, does that mean that um, it's totally arbitrary, like where, like how we think of, of time or is there like a, um, a, an indivisible unit of time of some measurable physical process that, that kind of determines um, like a smallest value for, uh, for a, a duration of time? Or is it just this kind of continuous value in math that, that we can't understand in that way? No, so it's, uh, I think with, uh, with time uh, uh, concerning this particular aspect, it's exactly the same as uh, with space. I mean, is uh, 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 some indivisible value or atom of space, uh, okay? Is there such a thing? We don't know, okay? Is there something for time? We don't know, okay? Uh, now, what, uh, uh, what we do know is we have uh, this physical constants and uh, like a Planck constant, velocity of uh, light, gravitational constant, okay? We have this... Uh, and they seem to be constant, okay, they seem to be constant. We call them constant and they seem to be constant. But of course, there are uh, specialists who say, uh, well, they are not necessarily constant. And we, in fact, we will measure how they change in time. They, certainly they change in time very slowly and in space and in time if they change at all. Okay, but nevertheless, we call them constant. Mm -hmm. And using this constant, we can calculate something that we uh, looks like looks like uh, 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 um, the fundamental unit of time and fundamental unit of space, and they are very 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 small, so small that you know, but they are calculated from the values of this constant, uh, uh, but they are not something that we measure. Okay. So we, we, we speculate that maybe there is something like Planck time. It's very small and probably it has something to do with, uh, uh, but it all will fail once we dis find out that these constants are not constants, are not so fundamental, right? And uh, so, uh, okay. So uh, uh, we don't know, we don't know. So there mm -hmm. are different theories, there are theories uh, most theories of physics uh, base on uh, continuous time and continuous space, which is easy. But when we come to discrete and they are not, they are so small. Now, how you how you calculate with such small? Uh, 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 we would have. Uh, uh, I mean, to use if we want to use computer to simulate anything real. Uh, uh, the number of this unit of time would be so tremendously that it will not uh, be able to, to even program the computer because there will be no, no memory to store such big numbers, you know, of these fundamental units of time. So we better, uh, uh, when we use computer to simulate uh, like uh, motion of planets, we decide that if we use uh, one hundredth of a second as a uh, fundamental unit of time, it's enough for uh, modeling this phenomenon. If we want to model something uh, going much faster, okay, and on a smaller scale, maybe we will, new, uh, we will need one thousandth of a, of a second, okay, to, mo to take as a fundamental unit on a computer, right? But uh, it's arbitrary so far, mm -hmm. okay? But yes, there are some physicists who would consider that space is discrete or time is discrete. Let's see what will happen from this. But this is, uh, 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 these are just attempts so far, so mm -hmm. far. So we don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, my... Uh, 
Uh, my idea is yes, probably uh, yes, time is discrete. Uh, you know, there is some, uh, but uh, uh, is it <clears throat> important to understand that? I don't think, uh, 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 I don't think so, because uh, unless we are interested in something very, 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 very fast. Uh, I don't think this is important for, for concerning the human applications, you mm -hmm. see. What about for quantum? Like, do you, um, because this paper that you wrote, because um, you, um, you mentioned uh, what you said earlier that in quantum physics, time is a, a parameter usually and not an operator. And you're wondering how to actually, um, how to actually make time something like important for, for the calculations in quantum physics. So is there, is there an importance on the quantum level for, for those tiny, tiny durations of time? Or, or is that also kind of um, not as tightly related? So like basically, I guess the, the first question that I'd want to ask is when you're dealing with quantum phenomena, what durations of time are you looking at? Or is that arbitrary too? Um, now there is something that I, uh, I need to explain, okay? There is this, uh, um, we have what is what we call quantum theory or quantum mechanics, okay? Mm -hmm. And now it's called quantum, quantum. And everybody thinks that quantum is related that there is a quantum of something. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, it's a quantum of energy or quantum of something, like right? that's the smallest part, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when we uh, consider space in quantum mechanics, space in quantum mechanics does not have quanta. It's continuous. Certain, certain quantities, when considered in a quantum mechanical uh, way, will have indeed indivisible values, like energy in a particular uh, uh, energy of a spring. If we want to make a quantum theory of a spring, oscillating spring, right? And we want to calculate whether a string can have any energies or only certain discrete values. And you find when you do your mathematics that string, for instance, uh, can have only certain energies, that there is quantum energy for this string, okay? But then you change the tension of the string and you find that this quantum energy becomes different. It's not an absolute, you see. It depends on what kinds of string, how long it is, okay, uh, uh, whether it's made uh, of this material or this other material. But then it will have only admissible energies. There will be quantum of energy. Now, if you consider a particle instead of spring, just a freely moving particle, no forces, okay, just whoosh, it goes, right? You throw it and it goes. You find that energy can be any, it's not quantized, it can continuous for this. So sometimes, but if you put a, a particle in a box and you, you say, no, you are not going to get out of the box, you find that this particle, will, it, it will get reflected. It becomes a little bit like an oscillating spring then you find that the particle in a box will have only available certain energies. Okay, if you make a box big, bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the allowed energies will be go into the continuous, you see? So mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the fact that we call some uh, the theory quantum, it means that there are certain quantities depending on the context that have the quanta, but other, uh, even if it is quantum theory, there are operators for them and so on, but everything is continuous. So space normally 
is continuous in quantum theory. It's not quantized. Uh, so it was not a surprise that uh, if we want to consider time, there will be also no need to consider time in a, in a discrete way, okay? There is no need. But the main point is that uh, when we try to play with time in quantum theory, we have to answer the question, what time, what kind of time it is, you see? I mean, it's, it's a, and the only reasonable thing, okay? Well, there is time of, uh, because time in general will depend on how you set the clock. If I set the clock at 12, according to Greenwich, okay, it will show 12. But if I set uh, 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 12 according to, to, to I don't know what, uh, uh, Pacific time, right? It, it, it also will be good. Now, uh, if we have a time operator in quantum theory, which time it's supposed to show? Greenwich or, or, or Pacific or, or, or some other time? You see, uh, you have to decide, yeah? Okay, which time? And in fact, uh, uh, it will show a time of what? Of, 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 of something... Uh, uh, Time is always of something that happens. There's no, uh, I mean, there's no point of, to, to, I mean, we meet at such and such time, okay? Clock shows such and such time, but it's an event, clock shows. Next, uh, next hour clocks will show a different time. So what is quantum theory? We have to decide, you know, what do we really want to measure with this time? So, uh, for me, at least, uh, I, I can ask reasonable question if I know what, I, what, what kind of time I am interested in. For instance, I'm making experiment, I'm doing something here, and I want to know how long it will take for something going from here to there. How long? How, okay. How long? Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a reasonable question. And it's called in quantum theory, time of arrival. You have a particle, it was sent, and how long it will take to arrive to a cell. And this will depend on uh, what kind of forces are acting on this particle. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe uh, there is force that repels, okay? So this particle will never arrive, you think? So, time of arrival, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good concept. And this is treated in quantum mechanics, uh, in a, a bunch of papers. And some uh, people say, that, yes, we can define an operator, like for uh, measuring positions of, 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 of things, uh, we can uh, we, we can use these operators to 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 predict time of arrival, uh, and that's fine with me. But if uh, someone says I want to define time operator, time of what, what kind of time? Then I say it makes no sense. I don't know what you are talking about. Please explain me what your time is measuring. Because time should be measuring something. There is no time, uh, you know, in general. Unless in our loose talking about things. Uh, I have a question about uh, the um, measurement of time. Because in your, in your paper, you wrote something about uh, what happens if you put clocks everywhere and uh, the resolution of the clocks in a quantum experiment. And uh, if I understand that correctly, there is some kind of uncertainty going on between energy and time or momentum and time. So um, maybe you could explain a bit what happens if you measure time in, the, uh, in a quantum 
experiment, uh, like um, like you said, with the time of arrival, and uh, what happens if you put, as you said, the clocks clocks everywhere and uh, with infinite resolutions. Okay. Now there is there is a little bit a little subtlety here. Okay. Suppose I put a clock everywhere. Suppose, okay. So there are clocks everywhere. And they click, they do their, their, their job and they show if they are good clocks, they, uh, they show time, right? Uh, and there is no reason why they should pay any attention uh, to what is going around uh, them uh, uh, because their job is to measure time and not pay attention to anything, you know, uh, 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 that is going around. Unless, 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 and this is what uh, happens in physics experiment, uh, there, are, there are things that are paying attention to what is going around, and they are called detectors. For a particle, you need a detector. If you don't have a detector, the particle will go, and you ha will have no idea where it goes. So you have, you have to have a detector. Now, this detector, can be wired to, the, to a clock, okay? But it is detector that uh, look ara looks around, not the clock, okay? The clock just will uh, register at which moment the, got the signal from detector, right? So let's forget now about, uh, 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 about the clock. Clock does nothing to the particle. A detector can do something that for the particle because detector should sense the particle. So it sends around some kind of signals that will be influenced where particle comes close, right? It may have electric field or something like that, you know, or it will react where the particle uh, enters and makes some, starts making chemical reaction inside the detector, right? Uh, so it is the detector that changes and acts on the particle during the measurement. Not the clock itself, okay? Not the clock itself. Uh, of course, uh, the, the particle can hit the, 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 the clock, uh, that's clear, you see, but uh, the fact that particle uh, clicks, uh, uh, hits the clock at, uh, and, and, uh, and the clock uh, registers something has nothing to do with the proper clock function. The proper clock function is to uh, uh, register at which time some signal will come, okay? So, yes, okay. So, um, I would say that it is uh, the detector. Now, question is, of course, there are different kinds of detectors, okay? You may have a detector that doesn't really care uh, about anything except whether a particle hit it or not. But if you want to make very precisely, like uh, uh, that, that this detector will send the signal to the clock at exactly precisely the moment that uh, it got hit, yeah? So uh, if you want to make such a detector, that is very probable that it will change the particle energy, even if it not, because, okay. Most of the experiments are such that uh, when the particle hits the detector, uh, you, we don't care anymore what happens to the particle after, okay? We don't do another measurement on the same particle. Okay, it got hit, you know, the asteroid hit there is fine, you know, it's gone, you know, asteroid is, uh, there is a crater, okay, and boom. We don't care about what happens to asteroid anymore. But uh, we have this uh, thing which are called photographic emulsion or cloud chambers where the particle goes and uh, we see the track of the particle on a photographic plate or uh, inside a bubble chamber inside, you know, uh, we see the track and this track consists of dots. Each dot is 
the particle is the same, it's not being killed, right? And it leaves a track of dots, okay? Each dot appears in a certain time, you see? And uh, 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 so we can, we, we have the, a series of measurements on the same object, okay? And we can ask how precise we can make this measurement of, of, of uh, measurement of times and which dots have been made by the particle. And we, we always have some uh, uncertainty because there's, there's measurements. Um, so here, what may come, may come this uh, relation between energy and time, which means that when we start to, to, to measure, to pay really attention to, 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 to time and which dots are made, then the energy of the particle is changing during this. Uh, 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 and the particle, for instance, slows down on something like that. But as far as I know, no one really, uh, no one really did such, uh, such calculations. What people do is just formally say, well, time, uh, time, Okay, time is measured in mean, is second, energy is measured in something, whatever, ergs or something like. We take the product and we get the, uh, the, 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 uh, the same dimension, product of time and energy is the, sign, the same kind of physical dimension of momentum times, uh, times uh, position, and it is the Planck constant. So probably there should be uncertainty between uh, energy and uh, time. And then there is other things like uh, we want to, we have uh, some oscillating phenomenon. And uh, for instance, we measure, we look at the graph of uh, earthquake. Okay, poo, 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 poo. something is oscillating. And we want to know uh, what was the energy released during the earthquake. And we realize that uh, if we really want to know uh, precisely energy, we have to uh, observe it through a long interval of time. Then we can uh, find uh, what was the energy. If we just uh, take a little piece of this, of this graph, uh, too short time that we will have no idea what energy uh, what it was, okay? Like uh, if you want to know what is the length of the wave, okay? Uh, you cannot say just, oh, let's take this piece and I will know the length of the wave. You will not because it's just this. You have to have at least several length ways of the wave to be sure, you see? So there are these kind of uncertainties also. Uh, they are different kinds, uh, but with time and energy, I would say uh, the first paper treating uncertainty of time and energy in a kind of a formal way was written by by by, by Nobel Prize physicist uh, Eugene Wigner, and this paper, in fact, uh, is uh, wrong. Okay. Uh, uh, it has mathematical errors. But uh, later on, people were playing and playing and playing and playing. And there is a general agreement that there is some kind of uncertainty or uh, complementarity between time and energy. But what exactly it is and uh, what follows from it, it's just uh, the cooking recipe recipes. So physics is more or less, you must be careful because there is uncertainty between time and energy. Uh, okay, and they, uh, and, and they take it into account. But then you ask, what do you exactly mean by that? Mm, um, um, uh, I don't know. So that's what it is. Kadiusz, I have a question uh, regarding these detectors. So in quantum mechanics, all these detectors are usually modeled or described as operators, right? Yes. You know? Yes, and um, the question is, is it, um, an operator is something that 
transforms or projects some values from one vector space into another vector space, right? So it's... No, it uh, transforms a vector into vector in the same space usually. And the act of measurement, isn't it uh, this uh, transformation from one vector space into another? Okay. In, uh, in uh, quantum mechanical books, you usually do not uh, find any description what is a uh, measurement and people really don't care because it becomes important only if you try to consider repeated measurement. Measurement and then another measurement and then a measurement. So you ask, we are asking what happens to the state of the system or your particle or whatever is your system uh, during the measurement because you are interested what will happen in the next measurement. Okay. So uh, normally, uh, yes, measurements are in a books, in books which are uh, dealing with the problem of repeated measurement. Measurements are represented by operators. Operators act on a vector or on a state. It produces another vector or another state in the same space, in the same space. It's a, it's a space of states of the quantum system. I would say it's uh, what is in standard book is uh, usually wrong, makes no sense at all. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a kind, there is a kind of mathematics. Mm, this is what uh, we took with Philippe Blanchard, my collaborator, as a starting point of our approach, where we created what is what we called EEQT, even enhanced quantum theories. There, indeed, every measurement by a detector is modeled by action of an operator, vector changes into another vector, and this change is, uh, is uh, yeah, well, there are quantum jumps. This is what we call quantum jumps, okay? When uh, there is a measurement, there is a action of the detector, detector clicks or get uh, register something that something really happened. And at the same time, suddenly the vector representing state of the system changes operator X on this vector and we call it quantum jump, okay? Jump is an action of an operator on the on the vector but this is in our approach in most other approaches there are no such things uh, like quantum jumps and is it possible to uh, to take a measurement without disturbing the wave function at least theoretically you can minimize try to minimize uh, this back action, okay, because uh, there's certainly somehow detector is uh, reacting to to the wave function when the wave function, whatever it is, we don't know what it is and why is detector reacting to this wave function, but uh, it is. But on the other hand, of course, wave function is uh, jumping when detector rea reacts. And uh, this change can be small or can be big, and we can try to make it as small as possible. Yes, we can. It's a, it's a whole science uh, of how to do it. Like, uh, can we de detect uh, a bomb without uh, making it explode, right? Uh, <laughs> 
and there is something and then we want to be sure that it is a bomb and not something else okay and then it may be difficult to make 100 percent sure that it's a bomb without destroying it or making it big uh, uh, for instance for instance in this uh, question of time of arrival okay in this question uh, we want to we want to measure at which time the particle arrives somewhere and it goes uh, it may go further away and we want to make this this measurement of time of arrival uh, to influence the wave as little as possible then yes uh, there are papers uh, telling what kind of a detector should it be to make the disturbance of the wave function uh, uh, as small as possible. But uh, I don't think it is possible not to, to, make, uh, to make it zero, no. If you want to measure something, uh, you have to disturb the system, there is no... Just, just in that line, you know, in the context of event-enhanced quantum theory, then, you know, we have been talking about measurements and also how, how, how time is used in that measurement. But then what are events? How, how events com come into being? Um, my point of view was and is that uh, what we do have are just events and now what are these events and how they come into being okay uh, I have my own view on this subject and I must say I must say I do not know about any other reasonable view and this my view is that not everything is quantum okay it's that there is a, a classical reality of things that really exist like tables and chairs and my nose you see and um, stars and uh, you know planets motions they really exist they are not probability clouds uh, this is matter and this matter I mean, it's yes, it's heavy, it has weight and uh, weight, okay? So this is a classical word. Our measurement system, our clocks, okay? But there are also things that uh, need quantum theory for their description. And there are these uh, probability clouds and infinite dimensional spaces in which you with abstract concepts of operators. So we have these operators and we have these vectors in spaces, but they are not tables and charts. It's not something that we can touch and then you see, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a different world. So there, are, there is a classical world and there is quantum world. This quantum world normally we associate with microscopic uh, things like atoms, electrons, okay? But we now know that there are also macroscopic quantum phenomena. Like we have a superconductor, we can have a big superconductor showing up the phenomena that are normally considered to be to be characteristic for quantum devices for quantum particles or something like that and perhaps in some sense there are also kind of uh, even macrocosmic quantum phenomena that we don't know yet about we have so we have uh, 
like uh, we have room temperature superconductivity and superconductivity uh, everybody te will tell you it's a quantum phenomenon and yes it happens in a in a, in a, in a device that is microscopic right but it must be lo very low temperature and specially t taking care of and so on. But, so there are these quantum, there is quantum world as there is classical world. Well. And for me, event, event is when something happened on the level that is uh, uh, available to us, that we can, that happens to matter, not that happens, but, but, so this is an event, clock ticks, okay? Uh, something hit something, you know, something is being created. Something is being disintegrated. Something moves, changing a position. This is event, okay? The, the things that happen on macroscopic scale or in a real world, this is, this is what we consider an event. But usually when, uh, when we have, uh, of course, we know about this quantum world but we know not because we di directly see the operators or this wave function or these vectors. What we see is the result of coupling of macroscopic things to this, uh, you know, like uh, we see a dot on a photograph uh, uh, coming from the, from the uh, at, uh, stratospheric balloon, okay? Or we see, and we say, oh, it was a particle, meson or whatever that makes these dots, right? We don't see, it was an event, an event because the dot appeared at a certain time in a certain place and we can see it, oh, it's an event. And then we interpret this event. Oh, this was probably like this or that cosmic particle that hit this, okay, yeah. But we don't see cosmic particle. We see things that is in our, that has a material reality, okay? That's, a, that's an event. But probably, probably according to quantum theory, so, during this collision, okay, or during this detection, something happened to this invisible, in this invisible world of quantum of quantum phenomena. Probably this meson, when it left this uh, this, uh, this particular uh, silver atom on the photographic screen, probably it changed a direction or it changed its wave, its wave function, changes or something like that, or even more. Before hitting this, this screen, uh, there was no really, uh, uh, this is what uh, our quantum theory would tell us, there was a wave that is everywhere in, this, in the world, in the, in the space, and the moment it hits the screen, the wave collapsed, because now we know that it was here, not, uh, you know, from complete uncertainty where it was before hitting, now we know it was probably here, so probably it's not far away from here now. So things, very strange things happened there. Thank you. So where do we stand then in terms of time? Because uh, if there is an event and, and it's because we perceive it in the tangible reality, right? Um, people talk about time passing by, you know, it's like a river flowing. But uh, is it really something tangible in that sense? When you have a river flowing, water travels from point A to point B, right? Um, but some philosophers, for example, will say that time is an illusion, that that is what we make of it. However, on the other hand, we do see that in our reality, things change. We age. Um, if I drop this pen, I see it fall on the floor it's a, a second later. So how do we reconcile our own perception of time passing by and the actual um, existence of time? Is time passing an illusion or is time altogether um, an arbitrary, arbitrary way of perceiving it that we have? How would you define it? Somehow we are here material. Uh, even if you uh, would like to be very spiritual and float uh, somewhere, you know, get rid of this, of this, um, mm, you know, matter has 
is aging, for instance, right? We don't like aging. Uh, yeah, we would like to to get rid of this uh, phenomenon of um, aging, and probably if we go to next density or whatever, yeah, to a different state, there will be no time and no aging, and uh, I don't know. Uh, what kind of happiness will it will be when uh, nothing happens, right? Because time is related to this, the fact that something happens. And now imagine nothing happens, everything exists, uh, uh, and nothing changes. And okay, that you are uh, free, but um, like uh, I don't know. So anyway, uh, what about this illusion problem? Is time an illusion? Uh, I think uh, uh, I think as long as we stay within uh, material uh, in the material realm, say, time is not illusion for us. Time is is very real, you see, uh, and uh, like uh, like free will. Free will, you can say it's an illusion, right? You uh, and many. People would say, oh, there is no free will, it's an illusion, you have an illusion that you have free will, because it's, uh, but in fact, uh, you imagine that you could choose otherwise, but in fact you couldn't, because uh, you just don't realize what all influences that are uh, happening on you. So you, you, you cheat on yourself saying that you have uh, freedom. No, you don't have any freedom. Uh, but, but yet, 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 we use this, uh, this illusion for good purpose, I mean. And we know uh, that uh, tomorrow depends on what I will do now. Uh, free will uh, works in the, into the future, it doesn't work into the past, and I said, okay, and without you know, using this free will, uh, what would be machines or something, I don't know what kind of thing. Yeah. So, not only time is not an illusion, but it's something very important, uh, especially uh, when we realize that uh, tomorrow will be the same as today until unless I do something now, you know, to change and to make a, to make a real change. And uh, this is very important to understand that uh, that we can change the future and we should uh, say, be conscious, observe ourselves, and take care of uh, how we think and what we do. Um, but from uh, some kind of uh, higher perspective, we can think also that uh, a part of this material world, there is also non-material reality in which in this uh, non-material reality there is also some kind of uh, probably beauty and order and there are certain patterns but it's not time that is important in this non-material reality is what is important there is probably some kind of uh, consistency, you know, and uh, uh, mm, how I would say uh, what is important in this uh, in the non-material reality, what is important? Uh, important is probably to be so to say collinear, collinear with truth, right? Uh, it's not so uh, uh, important whether something is sooner or later, is whether something is uh, true or not, say, okay? It's a, it's a completely different quality, right? True or not. This, is, this counts, not sooner or later, right? 
But I would say, I, I must say, uh, this is just uh, like a speculation. I do not have like a theory first, mathematical theory for this non-material reality. Even if I may, may have some guesses how the story may look, but probably it will be something that there is no place for time. Yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, there is no place for time. Okay. Uh, there is uh, so I do not have such a theory, but I must say, like for instance. Uh, there was a Stephen Hawking, right? The, the famous uh, physicist, right? Stephen Hawking. And uh, the Stephen Hawking was one of his, uh, he wrote the book, uh, what it is, uh, Short History of Time. You know? It was, was called Short History of Time, something like that. So he, in particular, uh, was very busy with replacing time with uh, what we, can, we may call imaginary time. And we, when we replace time with imaginary times, and he did and start playing at this, time became, becomes much more like space. So uh, with this Hawking, he, and he considers what we call it Euclidean physics. Euclidean physics is is physics in which uh, space-time has also four dimensions, but all dimensions are of the same kind, like uh, space, you see? And uh, playing with such ideas proves to be useful for certain things. Now, question is whether it's just playing, where, so to say, get rid of time as time, and let time be exactly like space. You don't distinguish between space of time. Is it just a mathematical game, uh, just something uh, used in only in uh, for calculation, or is it something really maybe in this other reality, non-material reality? In fact, there is no difference between space and time, always just the same, and so on. Mathematics is there except of un philosophical understanding is not yet there and our experiences of this other non-material reality or how it is for uh, being in force density how it would feel is also lacking okay we would be very happy to have a special mushroom that if we swallow like we we experience uh, uh, force density or whatever However, uh, when we read what uh, mushroom eating people describe, we see that they are really are hallucination and non-real non experiences, right? So that's it. I, I have a question that I just thought of when you mentioned about non-material reality and, and time. Is quantum particle and quantum physics itself like the study of non-material reality? And, and if so, and if time isn't so applicable in it, why, what would be the use of having operators for time when trying to understand quantum mechanics? Now, what happened when uh, quantum mechanics came um, on the table is that uh, it started to be almost uh, unavoidable not to talk about observer. There was always something about observer, 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 observation, observation. Uh, what's this? Uh, so, uh, and until now, it seems that quantum mechanics forces us to consider the concept of an observer, okay? Without uh, what happens in observe if someone is measuring something, but I mean, measuring, 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 observing something. Uh, I remember that I was uh, at that time at CERN, it was uh, like late 80s or something. And there was this uh, John Archibald Wheeler, the American physicist, 
uh, from Princeton. Uh, one of the very important physicists who invented um, kind of unified field theory and was present as uh, one of the top uh, American uh, government consultants and so on. Okay, so he was he was then very impressed uh, um, with realization that quantum theory is uh, really something that uh, requires our attention. So he was traveling around the world with one talk, one talk. And, uh, and, and he, then he, he came to CERN and uh, gave this talk to hundreds of best uh, theoretical physicists. I was there to listen, what is this talk about? And this talk is about uh, no phenomenon is a phenomenon unless it is an observed phenomenon, okay? And of course, uh, the next thing was, and um, the next question from the audience, does it mean that moon does not exist when now nobody looks at it? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so that was uh, uh, this question. So uh, there was this concept of observation, but then after a few years, uh, when Wheeler was kind of pressed by questions and question and question, what do you mean observe it? By, observe it by whom? I mean, is it a necessarily a human observer uh, to observe the phenomenon, to be a phenomenon? No, 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 it's not necessary. And that's, but he was very fuzzy about it. That means what, okay? Now, in... Uh, in this theory uh, of EQT that uh, I developed it with Blanchard, I was stressing again and again that, that we do not need human observer, that it is uh, nature observes itself, uh, and it observes through this material part. I mean, normally, uh, so if there is a detector and detects something, no human observer is necessary. Uh, if someone takes a photograph of the moon or even if uh, it is not necessarily a photograph, any trace that existence of the moon leaves on, on anything else, okay, it's enough. So I was stressing that no human observer is necessary. However, now I would say that uh, it was rather shallow understanding. My understanding was rather shallow because uh, to make an experiment reasonable, one requires that there should be some laws of nature. Without laws of nature, uh, 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 everything would be chaotic and uh, no there would be no observation, really. And uh, to have things like law of nature, I don't understand how laws of nature can be there without, without some kind of... Uh, intelligence uh, taking care of the fact that things are not completely random, that there are certain like uh, patterns and they keep, they don't change arbitrarily from day to day, right? There is a gravity and it is not fluctuating. I mean, there are, uh, I am here today and I am pretty sure that I will be here. Yeah. You, you see, we have, we have certain things that behave in a reasonable way. And how can it be in nature right? that uh, we have these uh, laws and we have constants and things are not chaotic 
So of course, yes, things are created, things, you know, things uh, catastrophes happen, but nevertheless, there uh, seems to be uh, some rationality behind everything that we see. Where this rationality would come without some kind of consciousness, I don't know, and I cannot imagine. So I would say it's, uh, when I say no human observer is necessary, but some kind of consciousness, I think, it's unavoidable. But what exactly it is, I don't know yet. It's a big question and it should become a fundamental question for the next thousand years, I see. When we look into the universe, um, is it possible that that uh, that we will that our observation will affect what happens in the universe? Is it in other words, uh, you, you talked about um, we have microscopic quantum effects, and you mentioned um, superconductivity at uh, room temperature. If we look into space, is it possible that we could have similar? Um, quantum-like behaviors on a cosmic scale because uh, when we have superconductivity, it, when it uh, appears at a, at a low temperature, like minus 200 and close to the absolute zero. Um, but then that is a very special uh, state of the system. And then when you have it at room temperature, it's, if there are similar uh, special conditions that make it possible. So I was wondering if there really is any limit to this, if it is possible that you could have such uh, effects on a cosmic scale. And if our being here affects this, uh, these processes, and if uh, we would even feel it, suppose if the Earth went through an area of space where there were such cosmic energies? Well, it's a, I think it's a difficult question. And it, uh, but it's not, uh, right now it, uh, uh, it is related rather to paranormal phenomena, uh, not to quantum effects. For instance, uh, okay, I very often, very often was repeating to myself that whatever I do, I should do in such a way as if the fate of the whole universe depended on it, right? I was saying this. Uh, I should, uh, if I decide to do something, I should be very serious because I am, I should never be sure that the, what I, whether if I neglect something, uh, the fate of the universe may change, you see? And it, it, it's of course uh, kind of very strange making uh, myself so important, right? But it was, uh, it, 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 it was addressed to me because how can I know, how can I know that it is not true? Right? If I neglect to do something now, do I know all the consequences of this fact? No, I don't know the consequences. And I don't know the consequences because I understand that my knowledge of physics, of law of physics, is just a tip of an iceberg. Right? That's what we know. We think we know so many things, so many things, so many things. But on the other hand, we understand that we know very little. There are so many questions that we have no idea how to answer at present. So we, what we know now after this 1,000 year of, 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 of science is probably the very tip of an iceberg and we are so proud of this. No? And there is infinitely many no more things that we have no idea. So how can I be sure that if I do something, it will not be, have an influence of, on the fate of the universe, okay? Now, how this influence can, can be, okay? Now, we have our thoughts and we have no idea what are these thoughts, okay? 
there we know there is uh, are phenomena phenomena like telepathy okay. so can travel and uh, the, the, the distance uh, make no makes no difference okay. uh, there are such things mm -hmm. so uh, and then uh, we have this religious phenomena religious phenomena where many people collect together and pray for something and they pray for something and then uh, what uh, what happens Medjugorje or whatever some miracle happens right they go to to so there are miracles that that happens we don't understand these miracles why they happen what they happen there are he healing possible I mean all kinds of things are possible and we have no control so whether there is uh, some kind of uh, of reaction of, of our thoughts of what we are doing on the cosmic scale, uh, we don't know. But what I would say is most probably have nothing to do with quantum theory. It has to do with more with phenomena like, uh, 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 as I said, parapsychological phenomena and parapsychological phenomena they uh, it's uh, it's it's like uh, it may have to do with quantum theory okay uh, namely we cannot for instance by our thinking change things in the material world uh, but we can change these maybe by thinking these non-material clouds of probabilities. By our thinking, we can change probability. We can influence probabilities of things to happen. And we know that in the universe, uh, there are uh, phenomena very sensitive to small changes. There are this butterfly effect when the flapping of butterfly here, okay, may cause an uh, earthquake somewhere else. Hmm? So there are these kinds of connections, very sensitive. So uh, thinking here may influence something, which may influence something, which may influence something. Normally, according to normal physics, it would propagate no faster than the speed of light. But on the other hand, we know that this uh, restriction of speed of light is uh, very iffy and there are even very serious physicists considering phenomena happening faster than light, faster than light particles, faster than light uh, signaling, okay, so, so uh, there is no reason why it should be not possible and then of course everything is possible, so I would be careful that is according to what we know, our wishful thinking has uh, no effect almost uh, most of the time. But sometimes we think, oh my good, maybe I should not have thought about this because now uh, by thinking about this way, this way, okay, I may have caused something. You see? Sometimes I think my idea of uh, taking care of our thoughts that uh, whatever I do and whatever I think I should be very careful because the fate of the universe may be, uh, may be uh, depend on it is not that bad okay it can be tired I mean you one can get tired from such a responsibility you know if you know that what you do may affect the universe but on the other hand other hand it can may uh, help in self-development. So, uh, I think we are coming to the end. Yes, I'm I think the really clock is getting... ticking. My, I yes. can see my clock. The time is uh, is moving here. <laughs> 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 but thank you very, very much, Ark. And see you on the next interview with Ark. Thank you, Ark. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Ark. Thank you, Ark. Thank you, Ark. Thank you, Ark. Yeah. Bye. 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 If I could save time in a bottle, if 
First thing that I'd like to do Is to save every day Till eternity passes away Just to spend them with you 